So, welcome to the YouTubes. Now, I'm going to talk about the Witch Doctor today. And this is going to kind of be a guide to take you from level 0 all the way to 70 and get all your Paragon levels. And be able to do, eventually, a Greater Rift level 100. Um, I'm going to walk you through everything you need to do, the gear that you need to get, and then... Um, the skills to have in endgame, but also kind of what you should do at the beginning to get get to that point. Okay, so basically with this class, um, it's interesting because the last build, the last armor set you're going to want to get is Mundanugu, and you actually don't summon pets and stuff as much as you might expect a Witch Doctor to do. So... This set makes it so you basically have a crazy bonus to Spirit Barrage. Um, and you basically com you basically combo this with your Gazing Demise, which makes it so that Spirit Barrage has a Phantasm Rune, and uh, each Phantasm lasts twice as long, and you know gives you increased damage, and so on. And then in the cube, you're going to have the Barber, so your spirit barrage accumulates and explodes and deals more damage. So basically with the witch doctor, um, we can talk about the end game gear and then kind of, yeah, kind of where you want to get to and then how you can go about getting to that, to that level, like what you can do in the beginning and things like that. So if you look at my inventory here, um, so I've got the Moon Danugu, and I can actually show you guys uh, a list of kind of the stats you're going to want to get. And I do believe I have everything except for like on my amulet and rings. I don't have a socket on this, this amulet yet. The Witch Doctor is kind of has an interesting build because usually you would expect the Witch Doctor to summon, you know, all kinds of uh, zombie dogs, gargantuans etc etc crazy fetishes that wield daggers and do all kinds of stuff um but actually the build that we're gonna use focuses on the moon Dunugu set which um so you can read the main effect that we're gonna want that really pushes your damage is uh the 20,000 percent increase to spirit barrage um now whenever i was playing through this I was maybe doing like let's say torment four kind of stuff until I got the the six set bonus. Um, then I was pretty able to, I was able to clear content like like really easily. So you shouldn't feel too bad if you're like damn like you know I've I've almost got all my end game gear but my damage is like not the best. I'm having trouble with torments. Honestly, like don't worry. Focus on getting this legendary set, and you will be able to rip through content, and then be able to farm quicker for stuff that you need. So that's what I'd say. Is you could go for the six set, or get uh, the Ring of Royal Grandeur, and just finish five pieces. You still get the six set bonus. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. But you know, basically to run through this, uh, you want the headdress. I'll tell you all the stats you need too. So on the head, you're going to want intelligence. Credit chance, spirit barrage damage, and socketed with a diamond to reduce cooldown, which is going to affect a certain set bonus we have that I'll talk about in a second. Then on the shoulders, you want intelligence, vitality, resist all, percent life increase. And then on the chest, you want intelligence, vitality, and armor, and socketed with topazes to give you intelligence. Then for the gloves, you're going to want intelligence, crit, hit, damage, chance, and reduced cooldown of skills. Then moving over to the belt, you're going to want intelligence, vitality, life percent, and armor. And for the bracers, you're going to want cold damage, intelligence, vitality, crit chance. For the amulet, you're going to want cold damage, crit damage, um, and crit chance. Uh, I don't have a socket in here, but you're also going to want to have a socket and socket it with a legendary gem, 
Bane of the Powerful. It actually doesn't really matter, but we'll just go with saying Bane of the Powerful, throw it in the amulet. There you go. Then you have the Ring of Emptiness, and my Ring of Emptiness is actually not have the ideal stats, so you're going to want attack speed increase, crit chance, cooldown reduction, and then socketed with Bane of the Stricken. I have Bane of the Powerful, Nora, you can have that in there too. Um, basically, you're gonna want the three. You're gonna want the three Bane of whatever gems. So, which is Bane of the Powerful, Bane of the Trapped, and Bane of the Stricken. Those are the three gems. Put them in wherever you can put them. Your two rings and your ammo. That's where they're gonna go. Um. Okay. So moving on to the pants, we've got. Uh, the fact that we need intelligence, vitality, and armor on the pants, socket with topazes. And I believe this ring is also not good. We want intelligence, attack speed, crit chance, and cooldown reduction. And a socket, if you would believe it. Um, so, I'm still working on getting my rings and my amulet to have good stats, but basically covered everything else. So for the weapon, you're going to want the Sacred Harvester. Uh, you're going to want increased damage percent, intelligence, attack speed, and have it socketed with an emerald for the crit hit damage. Uh, this weapon gives you Soul Harvest, which stacks up to 10 times. It's going to help you in your build. Um, for boots, you are going to want the Captain Crimson's Waiters, where you want intelligence, vitality, resist all, and spirit barrage damage. And then for the Gazing Demise, uh, you're going to want damage, intelligence, crit chance, cooldown, mana regen, and I believe that is it. I don't think you need the Locust Swarm damage, which mine has. Yeah, just increased damage, intelligence, crit chance, cooldown reduction, the Spirit Barrage damage you get anyway, and mana regen is what you want um so as i mentioned before the mundunugus you get uh you get the big bad voodoo which follows you around which is pretty cool and it lasts longer so you don't need to worry about it being on the ground and like like i literally never used it when i was leveling up i only started using it when i got this um you can also feel free not to use this set until you really have all six that you can use um, that's what I would say. I feel like it, I, f I was using it anyway, just cause it happened to be better than my other gear. But if you want to use like, there's a gem called legacy of dreams that gives you bonuses on the amount of unique legendaries you have. And, uh, not like if you have no set bonuses at all, you might just be stronger with that until you have the sixth power for the spirit barrage damage. Um, but anyway, for 4, you get 60% damage reduction for 30 seconds when you enter the Spirit Realm. So it's like if you do the Spirit Walk. And, um, but yeah, the set really shines with the with the 6th ability. But as I was mentioning before, so the cooldown and cost reduction are going to come into play with the Captain Crimson set here. So on 2, you re regenerate 6,000 life per second, reduce cooldown by 20%, resource cost by 20%. Which is good uh, for that third bonus because you'll have your damage dealt increased by cooldown reduction and then damage taken reduced by cost reduction. So those are pretty important stats. Uh, you will really, mostly I would say with this build, you're pretty squishy. So you do want to focus on uh, reducing damage taken as much as possible. I, right now in my current iteration of this, my toughness is pretty low. Um... And my damage is pretty high, so I'm actually... I We're going to have to see how well I fare in a Greater Rift. Um, I feel like I'm going to be a Glass Cannon. Uh, you definitely want to have a lot more uh, sustain. Um, so, that's something to think about. Like, you don't need to go hard on damage. At the beginning, I was going pretty hard on damage because monsters weren't really killing me. But I feel like with the scaling of the torments, you really want to kind of just focus on staying alive because... Your spirit project is going to explode on enemies, and they're just going to die. It's just about you staying alive. But at the same time, if you just click kill everything, then nothing can touch you. That's also a good play, too. So good on you if you can do that. Um, 
yeah, basically, like, these these bonuses just give you... So this one gives you uh, increased damage to things affected by your Locust Swarm. You're not, we're not using Haunt. I think there are builds that use Haunt. Mine doesn't. So you only really care about the bonus damage on Locust Swarm. And, um... Yeah, so... This makes it so your Spirit Barrage gains the Phantasm Rune, and then basically lasts longer and deals more damage. Um, and increases your attack rate, which is really important. Then the Compass Rose and Traveler's Pledge effect is pretty cool. So when you're moving, your damage taken is reduced. And when you're standing still, your damage dealt is increased. So if you look at my numbers here, like when I move around, see my toughness is going up. And then as I stop, that comes back down. So that's interesting. Um, I don't really think about it too much, but technically if you're like moving through a mob, you're going to take less damage. And then if you're standing still, usually what happens with me is like, I will just stand still and like kill something. And then, you know, my damage will spike up. And then if I won't try to avoid stuff, I just walk around naturally anyway. So I like, I don't have to, I don't like keep this in mind that I have this going on, but it ends up just working out pretty well. Um, then this reduces the damage for each stack of soul harvest you have. So I like to just hop in a big mob. And what happens a lot is like you literally would just kill everything in your path. So it's kind of hard sometimes to get that to work. Unless it's like an elite pack or something. But so sometimes I'll just try to like run in um, and like just hit, you know, I have mine on right click. So I just try to run in and hit right click on like a big mob. Just get my 10 stack and then I have damage reduction. Um, and I am pretty flimsy. Like I'm pretty, uh, I, I die pretty fast if I don't have everything going. So I even like to just pop spirit walk. So I get the, um, I get the reduced damage. I get the reduced damage from this effect and, uh, try to stay alive. I pop this too, get my, get healing done, reduce damage taken done and like then get my stack so that I'm, I'm like kind of stable. And, uh, cause I, I, I can literally like die to like an elite right out of the gate in a greater rift. So that's something to be careful about. Um, anything else we need to talk about here? So that looks like it for the gear. I talked about everything there. Um, or we can talk about the legendary gems too. So the Bane of the Powerful one, you get 20% increased damage for 81 seconds after killing an elite pack. Uh, definitely good. You definitely want to kill elite packs and getting increased damage is always good. And then you get 15 increased damage versus elites and take 15% damage, uh, reduced from elites. Um, that's really good. That's the rank 25 when you get these. And by the way, these, these legendary gems you will get by doing greater rifts. You just do the greater rifts. You will get all the legendary gems. You don't have to worry about it. And then you also can level them up. So you see this says here. It says rank 15 right over here. So uh, you just do a greater rift when you're done with it. You talk to the NPC and you basically for free, you have a percentage chance of succeeding and ranking it up. And so you just go ahead and do that. This one, being the stricken each attack, you make, uh, make it so that you, they take more damage from your attacks. And you get 25% increased damage against bosses and rift guardians, uh, rank 25. And then this is the other one that I need to put in my amulet that I haven't yet. So it increases damage against enemies under the effects of control impairing effects by, you know, by a certain percentage as you level it up, it gets higher. And then you get an aura that reduces the movement speed of enemies within 15 yards by 30% at rank 25. So you slot these all in to your jewelry. It was like, if you notice these, these, it says it can be inserted into jewelry, jewelry with sockets. So you can't put it on your weapons or anything like that pretty cool honestly if you have like multiple legendary gems but you can only have up to three because you're two ring slots and your amulet so that's that and let's take a look at the cube too so i'll show you how to get the cube in a second um but basically you have all these recipes with the cube so you can get these legendary powers that you extract that's what's going on over here these are three legendaries i've extracted their power from by using this you fill this up you throw the legendary in there you know, let's say that's the legendary, you transmute it, you get that power. Boom, so I, pu I found a barber, I put it in here, did this recipe, filled it up. Now, instead of dealing direct damage, my spirit barrage accumulates on the target. When I stop casting, it explodes and it deals 500% of its damage to all enemies within 50 yards. So that's pretty ridiculous, honestly. Like, you'll just notice that you'll be channeling, 
your spirit barrage and once you're done it'll just kind of like kill the enemy and it's crazy because i've had enemies that are like i've taken up less than like 25 percent of their health and then i like walk away for a second and they just die so um it's interesting you have to learn how to kind of like gauge how much of your spirit barrage you want to accumulate on a target before you let it go and have it kill kill it so you can you know you can optimize this uh just by practice then uh, Aquila Caras, uh, while you're above 90% of your mana, all damage you take is reduced by 50%. So you actually, with this build, you don't use too much mana. And I guess that's something. this is something to be mindful of because definitely damage taken reduced by 50% is huge. So you, be careful of your mana usage. You do gain mana. There's good mana regen in this build, but um, I feel like this is something that you have to be more mindful about rather than like the... Uh, this effect I was talking about earlier. This is just more natural. This one is more... You can play into this. I mean, you could probably play into this one too. It's just this one seems a bit more important. Then the Ring of Royal Grandeur is kind of how you make the set work. So if you notice, we get two different set effects. Um, well, three if you count this one, but this is fine. This isn't like... Nothing is contending for these. This set needs an extra piece, and we wouldn't be able to get the Captain Crimson set to three if we obviously had the legs. So, uh, so this really, this is a really important piece. I would really try to get this ASAP. And one important thing to note about this, all the other gear, you just kind of farm like whatever, but this one only comes from act one, uh, like, um, what are they? Bounty caches. So you have to do your act one bounties to actually get this thing. Um, I thought it'd be hard to get too, but I've noticed, like, I've been doing, like, Torment level, like, I don't know, like, the first time I did it was, like, Torment 7, I want to say, either 7 or 8, and I got this right away, um, but I was honestly, like, I was, like, trying to upgrade my rings and stuff, um, so if you see, like, here, you can upgrade a rare item, so you use this to farm stuff, uh, like, if you put in any, let's say you just have, like, you know, an offhand uh, a mojo that's just rare level 70 you throw that in here and you fill this up and you pop it in you transmute it you'll get a legendary mojo it's a good way to try to get this one that's a good way to just get all your gear in, in in general but um i was trying to do this with with my ring of royal grandeur and i didn't realize that you couldn't get it this way you can literally only get it from act one caches so be sure to just do your bounties for Act 1 for this thing. You do all the five bounties, you'll get that uh, that cash, and that will have a Ring of Royal Grandeur. And it seems like, you know, doing it on higher levels, it seems to seems to get it all the time. So, um, I don't know. I've heard it could be hard to drop, but it seems like, yeah, on, on the higher difficulties, it's, it seems like it drops fairly often. So, that's how you get this thing. And this really, yeah, this really carries you because you can do this build like you can do higher, uh, higher rifts and stuff if you just have six sets of the Mundanugu. Then obviously throwing in the Captain Crimson set as well, which you're able to after you have this ring, um, and just have five pieces of Mundanugu. This will also make your make your damage taken and your damage dealt really uh, improve. So yeah, that's all the gear. Then let's talk about the skills. So we've got Spirit Barrage, uh, Manitou. So this I have bound to left click. I just click around, uh, you know, you have the Spectre that hovers over you and then you do a whole bunch of damage already, but then you have a 20,000% increase with the gear. So this is like the main thing you cast and it accumulates on the target as, as we said with that other piece of gear. So you accumulate it, you let it go, explode, kill a whole bunch of stuff and then it attacks like for you as you just run through running around and stuff um then you have your soul harvest so and then you have the languish rune so this makes it so you increase your armor by 10 percent per each harvested enemy and with the build you have uh you have up to 10 stacks uh with the sacred harvester either here or in your cube you get this effect so it stacks up to 10 times so you get extra damage Reduction or more armor that is. Um, then, see the main build uses Spirit Walk with Jaunt, which increases the duration to three seconds. But it already lasts two seconds, and I like being able to have 
additional 100% movement speed. I feel like this is more useful. I feel like, uh, for another reason we'll talk about, you pop your cooldowns quicker, so you can keep popping this, and then you're just moving way quicker. I feel like the one second here extra doesn't really help you as much as the 200% movement speed. So this is the way I like to play it. And I was getting used to this anyway, and it feels it feels bad for me to move this move slower for an extra second. I'd rather just move fast. Um, yeah, there's that, and and also importantly, the, this thing triggers uh, when you enter the spirit realm, but it's for thirty seconds, so it lasts like after you leave the spirit realm as well. So it doesn't really, you don't really have to be in the spirit realm for that. Um, so that's that's all well and good. Then you've got Lux Swarm Pestilence. Basically, you deal a whole bunch of damage to an enemy, and it jumps to two additional nearby enemies with Pestilence. That's cool, and the damage is increased with our gear. Uh, Piranado, basically, this will, like, yeah, this will pull enemies um, in. So, it's kind of nice to, like, cast this, and then you can just Pestilence, and then it'll pop over to, like, three enemies that are in there. And then you can just continue with Spirit Barrage, explode them. They're all close together, so you can, like, kind of CC everything. Make sure you don't die and stuff. It's pretty good. Maybe you do this and then Soul Harvest, they're all together. You get a whole bunch of guys in your Soul Harvest with this combo. That's all good. Um, big bag of Voodoo. So you can do your Fetish. It actually uh, goes around with you. And so it heals you and um, reduces the damage taken by 20% and gives you increased attack speed and movement speed as well. And it follows you around too. So you just you can just move faster with this on. Um... I want to talk about this one first. So, Grave Injustice gives you 1% maximum life and mana, um, and you reduce the cooldown of all your skills by one second when an enemy dies within 20 yards. So, as you're killing stuff, you will get back your Pyranado, your Spirit Walk, and your Soul Harvest. So, that's pretty cool. You can, like... Um, importantly, like, I was having trouble using this whole build just because it just it like i said it really works when you have the six pieces together of your main set the moon Nugu. um but with grave injustice you just make it so that you're like constantly like you don't really worry about your cooldowns i was worrying about my cooldowns before i built this completely i was just trying out the meta you know i'd get some gear try try out this build it wasn't really working for me uh and then you know once once everything everything just kind of comes together once you have the armor set so um, but definitely a cool one. You could still use it in other builds too. It does work pretty well. I felt like there was I was I'll talk about a build later that I was using kind of uh, as I was leveling up that seemed to work for me. But um, anyway, when you can use this and it works, use it and it'll work. So this basically makes it so you take less damage. Um, it says you and your pets. So it doesn't really matter. So it's just it's just for you and it makes it so that like when more enemies around you you have more resistance um and it's affected by your gold pickup radius so you know if you have good gold pickup radius it technically helps you gain some resistance um i wouldn't really focus that on that as a main stat but you know it is if you want to get it for your secondaries you can if you want to do like micro we want to micromanage micro optimize your secondary effects you can go for gold pickup radius spirit vessel um, makes it so that when you die, you enter the spirit realm for two seconds and you heal to 50%. You can only do it every one, once every minute. Um, you will notably enter the spirit realm, so you will have the set bonus as well to take 60% less damage for 30 seconds when that happens too. So that's pretty cool. And so, uh, you will have this because your build is squishy, so you may well die and you can still continue like your boss fight or your rift uh, without wasting too much time. So it works out pretty well. I thought like, yeah, and again, I wasn't using this at the beginning because I was kind of building like a pretty tough survivable build with like pets and stuff. Um, and I was getting other stuff that was more helpful, but seems this seems to be pretty good. I think there, like, I, I'm still iffy on it because I think there are potentially passives you could use to make yourself just not die, but... I like you can get like you can get like one hit KO'd. You can just get yourself in a lot of weird situations. So it seems it seems like a good one. I was finding myself wanting to have this in builds I was using. So you know everyone dies sometimes we must return to finish what we started. So it is what it is. Um, Rush of Essence. So this gives you basically mana when you use uh, Spirit Barrage. Uh, 
I guess it, it, it gives you mana for, for a lot of your other skills too, but I feel like you don't use the other ones as often. But in any case, it, this keeps your mana up. Yeah, but like it triggers on Spirit Walk, triggers on Soul Harvest. Um, so those are the relevant ones. But yeah, you basically have a lot of mana in this, and that's good too, because you want that 90% reduction from Akula Karas, which is in your cube. So yeah, that's those are all the skills there. Um, so before I show you some gameplay of how everything gets uh, put together with this, I want to say that another build I was using, and let me see if I have this in my wardrobe here. I don't have it, but so here's what I was using at the beginning. So for example, we weren't using Spirit Barrage. We were playing around with, I liked Corp Spiders at the time. I was really liking Spider Queen. I'll show you what I, what I had. So I had something like this. So I had I had Spider Queen. Then on right click, I had Grasp of the Dead, Desperate Grasp. I had, I did have Zombie Dogs, but yes, I did have Zombie Dogs. And then I was using Burning Dogs. I liked the chill guys. Lifelink was good. Lifelink and, and then I was, I was using burning. I was mostly using burning dogs. So I had like a burning dogs here and then I had uh, What is what is button is this two? Yeah, see I had I had zombie dogs on two. Well, hold on. Let's 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 do it like this. Let's do it like this Okay, zombie dogs were on two On one I had Ah I was playing with Mass Confusion. Um, something like this was fine. I think I had something else on, on one, though. To be honest with you. What did I have on one? No, I guess it... I guess... Yeah. Okay, let's try to build this out. Let's see. Okay, so Zombie Dogs on 2. On 3, I was messing around with Acid Cloud. I liked this one, the Slow Burn. It was kind of good. This was like my Mana Drain. And then 4, I definitely had Gargantuan, and I liked Restless Giant. It was just kind of cool because whenever... Sometimes I wouldn't even see an Elite Pack, and I just saw my Giant like blow up. And then I knew that an Elite Pack was, was nearby. It's kind of like a heads up. And get you ready for that kind of fight, or just you know find ones that you didn't find, whatever. Kind of a minute thing, but kind of helped so i had something like this uh i feel like this was not on one like i don't know but yeah i had so i had my pets out and then as far as passives go like let's see i liked i like jungle fortitude i had well, let's see here i i was think i was looking at blood ritual oh i had pierce the veil to do more damage i was more focused on damage than survivability um then I had I was using Vision Quest, so I was using Vision Quest and then using like Corpse Spiders to get back my mana regen by so by increased by forty percent for five seconds. When I got there, I was using um, let's see, yeah, Blazing Spiders to just get a whole bunch of mana, so they re return three mana per hit. But you know, it's going back and forth. I like Spider Queen. I also liked let's see, I liked Widowmaker. Yeah, Medusa. I was using Medusa Spiders too. I, I liked I liked using the spiders. Um, I was not using Swampland. What was I using? I think I was using Confidence Ritual. Yeah, Confidence Ritual, dealing more damage there. Um, yeah, those are the ones I was using. This seemed pretty good. This was a good build. I was ripping through some content. My my dogs were taking care of stuff. My Gargantuan was like tanking. I was hanging back. You know, I was just casting this thing and like just doing aoe all over the place like that throwing out my spiders and mass confusing when i got in something heavy or needed to get people off me and stuff um yeah that was mostly the build it came me through 70 then you know just started farming for everything and eventually got my mundunugu so it didn't take too long either like it took me like a few days to just get my mundunugu um definitely there are people that play longer than me i did feel like i was playing a, a bit but honestly like 
It, it really isn't too bad. Like, these things will drop eventually, and then you get, like, multiples of them. Um, another important thing, too, is that from your cube, like, if you get one set item, you can use this recipe to convert a set item into the uh, into another set item. So if you have, like, the, let's say you have, like, the pants, and you have two pants, you could throw a pants in here, and you could get something else. You could build your set out that way. It works out pretty well. I ended up, I didn't have to do this too much. I actually just got, um, I just got everything, kind of, like, just by playing the game um, and finding stuff. You can just do, like, I would say mostly I was just doing upgrade rare item. Just getting rare items, you know, crafting them or just finding them. Throwing them in here. Like, you just save them. Save the one you want. Let's say you're looking for, like, the gloves. You save the gloves. Th throw the level 70 gloves in here that are rare. And then, you know, fill this up. Boom, boom. Transmute it. Hope that you get the gloves that you want. Uh, later on in the game, you'll get these blood shards by doing greater rifts. Uh, and just finding random stuff. You, f you find these randomly. You can, you can gamble for certain items. So you can get your mojo this way. You can get the gazing demise. There are tables. I will link some resources for you guys. Uh... In the description of this video where you can find the drop rates for certain things on based on like you know how many average blood charges you're gonna use to get the mojo you want or like the certain gear you want take a look at those see if it's better to gamble for them or to convert them from a rare using the cube uh, see what your chances are for these some things are rare like the amulets and rings are a little bit rarer so you may just want to, you may, you know, do whatever it seems to be cheaper and easier to do. I think, I think the amulet had like, there was some piece I remember that had like a crazy rate for gambling, but it seemed like upgrading was a lot easier to do. So just, just, just do what will save you the, the uh, most amount of resources in the long run. But don't worry about it too much. Like as you grind, you'll, you'll, you'll get everything eventually. Um, and that's part of the game, you know, the game is to just grind and, get better and better gear and everything like that so um so now let me show you how you get the cube all right guys so i'm gonna i'm just went to tournament one and i switched my build a little bit to use this chicken set basically so i can turn into a chicken and move faster just to show you guys how to find this cube um, so this cube right here, the Kanai's cube, I showed you a few of the recipes. Um, another important one I'll mention right now too, actually, is, let's see here, augment ancient item. So basically you use this to add stats to your gear, uh, with legendary gems corresponding to these ranks mentioned here. So for like weapon rank 30, jewelry rank 40 armor rank 50 um and whatever gem you want to augment with so for example or actually for all of the gear on the witch doctor you're going to want to just use topazes and just get the highest uh rank of topaz and just get the max intelligence augment into your gear and i believe it only works for ancient gears so uh you're going to need an ancient equivalent of your gear to augment but, you know, as you go along, you'll find, basically, there's something extra to do in the game. Just find Ancient of all your gears, and then, you know, augment it all the way, and get the best stats you can. Alright, so, anyway, to get this thing, because you're going to want this a lot, from all these other, from having these bonuses, and from just being able to farm by upgrading your rares, reforging legendaries you find if you want better stats on them set items to get the different one if you have like say you have like 16 gloves you want everything else use this so to get this cube you go to act three ruins of Ceteron. and i had to switch out of torment 16 because i was just dying with my chicken set ah okay guys so, apparently, it is the Ruins of Cetron, but you have to go... I completed the bounty, and now I'm coming back out. Right. And... I'm exploring this whole area. So, we're in the right place, but we just have not explored hard enough. I didn't know to go backwards. I thought you could just keep going forward, but apparently... 
you know, not everything is as easy as one, two, three, apparently. So you go backwards and you keep looking for that cube. So we want to get into something called, I just, I just closed it, but it's the sanctum of someone. The Elder Sanctum. Perfect. Okay, so you explore the Elder Sanctum, and we're going to find, like, this area that basically is going to contain the cube. And I guess I will be able to see the cube, too. So, I'll show you guys what that looks like when we end up finding this thing. It kind of looks... Not exactly like that. Um... Let's see, let's see. It's It looks like a little room kind of thing. We'll know it when we see it. Is it this? No. Ooh, hey. Okay. There we go. So, this is where you find the cube. So, if you see Elder Sanctum, um... I think it can be in different places, but basically, like, through here was where you start the Ruins of Cetron, see? So that is the Act 3, um, top right. Uh, you don't have to do the bounty, I believe, and apparently you can do this at any difficulty, so it doesn't matter. I just went to Torment 1 so I could cruise around as a chicken to make it kind of quick. You come here, click on the cube, you're going to have whatever resulting cool is going to be, like, you found the cube, blah, blah, and then you're going to have the cube in your town. Okay, guys, so now we're going to hop back into Torment 16, and I'm going to run a Greater Rift with you guys. I think I went over everything. Um, and let me just show you how you actually play this build, and hopefully I don't die. Um, because I don't think I've done a Crater Rift in a while since I kind of changed my gear to be more glass cannony, but let's go. Let's do a level 75. And let me show you how I handle myself here. Oh my god. We almost died. But now, we're just going to kill everything. And we're not going to let that happen again. At least I hope not. So, the thing is, right, like, if you kill everything on sight, then they will not be able to kill you. So, as you can see, I just kind of, uh, it really doesn't matter what I do, to be honest. These guys just disintegrate in front of me. But I like to keep uh, my voodoo hex up, and I just kind of click on people, and they, and they die. Um, I can group them up. And, you know, make sure I keep my Soul Harvest stacks up. I like grouping together elites, throwing, hitting them with the Locust Swarm. And that's basically it. So, but yeah, like I said, this is way, 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 way more Glass Cannon than my normal builds. It kind of works, though, as you can see. Um, like I said, if I kill things, they are not threatening to kill me. So, you just click them before they get close or whatever. The thing is, we do more damage close up, don't we? I think we have, at least I believe we have confidence for show up. Maybe we don't. If you don't have confidence ritual up, I can't check right now, but I've, in other, other builds, you can have confidence ritual. But anyway, building for survivability is good because, as you saw, we, I mentioned too, like, you literally die at the first second. That's probably the hardest part of the whole fight, is just not dying in that first two seconds. And then once you get everything going, you have more survivability. And you can kind of just fearlessly run into packs. You don't have to worry about anything. So at this point, I actually think we picked up the pylon because uh, we're impervious to damage right now. That's pretty good. Almost about halfway into this. I'm just holding my mouse click on those big guys there. 
luckily we're getting a lot of good elites here, so hopefully we'll be done with this pretty soon. Ooh, stay away from those explosions. Okay. Wow, my game lagged there. That's pretty good. See, I guess I didn't have um I didn't have my voodoo thing up, so that's why I was taking some more damage. So obviously, we want to make sure everything is always up. Otherwise, we're going to be a bit weaker. And it is kind of exhilarating, you know, being on the brink of dying is kind of fun. You know, so go through killing guys and then trying to hit my sprint as fast as possible or as much as possible. I'm constantly outpacing the timer here. The other thing I guess I would warn about is like to avoid these explosions and there's also those other like fat guys <laughs> that uh that explode after you kill them. I've definitely died to those guys so that's something to be careful of too and they kind of explode slowly so either avoid them. I usually just try to avoid them just to be safe but if you don't avoid them at least outrun them so that they don't explode. You're not caught in an explosion there. Okay, so approaching three quarters. So pick up some lightning. Hopefully this will make it a little bit easier. Let's hop into the third floor. And oh my god. Tried to kill me, but couldn't quite get there. Oh wait, need to grab these things. Oh my god. Alright. There we go. Rift Guardian. Let's hold click on this guy. He's going to throw fire at us. Ooh. Oh no. I don't want to be in there. Give me that life on hit. There we go. So you see he just kind of like died at the end um, just basically from those things exploding and we can talk to Urshi and basically this is how you level up your gems here get them to the high rank you want so I guess that's about it I guess one thing I didn't mention too is I'll quickly go into this so your paragon levels basically there are certain priorities you're going to want to have um in how you deal with these so basically as far as your core goes um you are going to want to focus on movement speed first um it, i guess it doesn't really matter which order you do it in but movement speed is good because you're going to be farming and you can run through things quickly and kind of get your gear as quick as possible so you max out your movement speed, and then after that, you just put everything into intelligence. Um, for offense, you first want to do crit chance, then crit damage, then cooldown reduction, and then attack speed. And you just get all those maxed out, which you should do pretty good. I'm a pretty low paragon level, so my character is pretty strong, honestly. It wasn't too motivated to go... Uh, I don't know, so much farther before I made this. I'm pretty confident that my character can kind of clear all the content. Um, it's all good. The only thing I have difficulty with is uh, in group parties, it's hard for me to solo sometimes, but I did just change the build, so it could it could be different now too. Anyway, so for defense, um, you first want to go with armor, then resist all, 
and then life and then life regen i'm kind of going life regen first because i want to be a little bit tankier i guess uh life life or ref regen i don't know to me it seems like life regen is a little bit better but yeah they people recommend you to go life so i would believe them uh utility first you do area damage so this basically makes it really powerful when you do your aoe effects then you're going to do life per hit be a little bit stronger and then resource cost reduction is next and then you max your gold fine last because you're gonna have a lot of gold honestly like i mean 340 mil this is this is insane i hardly use gold for anything so yeah that's about it um it's a pretty fun class uh i've been having fun with my witch doctor honestly i got into diablo 3 uh a bit a little bit ago and just kind of played this character from like level 18 up and it was pretty quick uh pretty fun um, definitely a really strong build, really powerful on this upcoming season. So if you want to play Witch Doctor, this is definitely how to do it. Um, one, th some things I guess you could note is that it's really easy to gamble for a Gazing Demise when you're like level one. So if you do your challenge rift, definitely try to go for that. Then probably after that, I would go for the weapon. Uh, cause either the Barber or the Sacred Harvester is really good. Um, yeah. And then, you know, like I said, do your Act 1 cash for your Ring of Royal Grandeur, and then just kind of farm for everything else. And I guess that's really, that's really all there is to it. Um, anyway, enjoy yourselves, and thanks guys for tuning in. Peace.